Welcome to this video on the authorization and permissions aspect of Tableau Server and Tableau Online. There are four main components of Tableau Server and Tableau Online security. Authentication, authorization and permissions, data security, and network security. This video will focus on the second piece, authorization and permissions. Authorization, also referred to as permissions, deals with content published to Tableau Server, who can see the content, and how they can interact with it. Before we dive into assigning permissions, let's discuss where content lives in the Tableau Server. The highest level of content organization is at the site level. Sites are meant for distinct user communities and allow for multi-tenancy on Tableau Server. Each site's workbooks, data, and user lists are completely isolated from content on other sites. To create a new site within our Tableau Server instance, sign in as an administrator. Navigate to the Settings page. There are various settings categories across the top of the page. Click New Site. There are various site related settings. More information about setting up a site can be found in the online help. I'll name this site ABC Corp and move on. Once there are multiple sites, as an administrator, we can see a list of sites in the Sites page in the Tableau Server interface. Let's talk about the next level down in content organization, projects. Projects act as folders within sites, which allows us to manage the permissions of content at scale rather than on an individual workbook or view level. To create a new project, navigate to the content page, click Projects. This takes us to a list of projects on this site. Click the New Project button at the top left-hand corner of the page. I will name it Sales, but you can use whatever an applicable name is for you. Once the project is created, let's navigate to the actual project page. Here we can see which workbooks and views are in the project. We can also decide who has access to the project and how they interact with it by going to the Permissions section. We will discuss assigning permissions shortly. So far we've covered organizing content in sites and projects. Before we discuss assigning permissions, let's briefly talk about the users we will assign permissions for. Like projects, groups are a great way to manage security as you scale. Let's make a quick group. Go to the Groups page. Click the New Group button. I'll name the new group Sales Managers, but feel free to use whatever makes sense in your environment. Once the group is created, Click the group and then click the Add Users button. I'll add Chris and William to the Sales Managers group. We have a system for organizing workbooks with projects and a system for organizing users with groups. Let's assign permissions to control which groups have access to which projects, along with how they can interact with each project's content. To assign permissions, go to the content page, click on the Projects tab. Click the checkbox for the project you want to change permissions for. I'm going to use the sales project we created earlier. Once the box is checked, an Actions menu appears. Click the Permissions option. Let's assign some permissions. This can be done at the individual level or the group level if we want to assign the same set of permissions for multiple users. Click the Add a User or Group rule. I'm going to use the Sales Managers groups we created earlier. 
When assigning permissions, there is a drop-down that gives us the options of various roles. These are not different license levels, rather they are permission templates or starting points. Let's choose the viewer role. Notice that the view permission is now allowed. We can also choose individual abilities. Let's also allow the sales managers to filter. The bottom section of this permissions page displays the resulting permissions based on the rules we've chosen. This helps clarify what the experience will be like for a user in potentially confusing permission scenarios, like if permissions are defined for a user in multiple groups. In this example, we have defined permissions for a group of users and a project. Workbooks that are subsequently published to, in this case, the sales project, will inherit the permissions we've defined here. The same goes for users that are added to the sales manager's groups. Keep in mind that permissions can also be defined at the individual user or workbook level. If permissions are not explicitly defined, as indicated by the gray box, the default result is to deny the users. Individual permissions trump group-level permissions. This means that if an individual is specifically denied a right, but is also a member of a group that is allowed the same right, the individual deny will win out. For more information on how permissions are determined, what each ability is, and more, please refer to the online help. Thank you for watching this security and authorization training video. For more information on security with Tableau Server and Tableau Online, refer to the installation and configuration video, which addresses authentication specific to Tableau Server. The data security with user filters training video is relevant to both Tableau Server and Tableau Online.